What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Jesse Laco, AthleteX.com. Today we're talking about how a skinny guy built a bigger chest. A big chest. A bigger chest. Big chest. Er. Big. Er. Big. Okay, how to grow your chest. And let's face it, he looked like this before and there's no denying the fact that Jesse has grown his chest. I wanna share with you what exactly he did because we can learn from everybody. Let's go into the mind of a skinny guy and help these guys out to see exactly what you did. All right, so if you wanna start building a bigger chest, then you need to start at least understanding the difference between these two steaks. Oh, those look delicious. You really are becoming the liver king, aren't you? No, like I said, I don't eat trembolone sandwiches. Well, actually what you see between these two steaks is a difference in size. One is about a 12 ounce steak and the other one over here is like a six ounce steak. Clearly there's more meat in the 12 ounce steak. And if you wanna build your chest up, you better start learning how to pack on more meat to your chest. And the way to do that is by relying on that big compound lift. And when it comes to the chest, we're talking about the bench press, something you did more of. Exactly. Um, the bench press, which is obviously not my strongest lift compared to my squat and deadlift, which are pretty impressive if I do say so myself. They are impressive, I won't um, lie. I did increase the frequency of how much I was benching um, through an ABA structure, mm -hmm. um, which is in our old school iron program, which you can find at thenext.com. Nice plug. Thank you. Um, and I found that by increasing the number of times I was benching from, let's be real, zero times a week <laughs> to one to two times a week, right. depending on that split, yep. um, I found that I was getting more progress going with, especially my strength, and then how much I was able to uh, progress with weight on the bar. So for those that don't quickly understand the ABA structure, if yep. you put your bench press in your A workout and did it on Monday and Friday, right, A, B, A, the B workout would be Wednesday, you wouldn't yep. be benching. But in the next week, it goes B, A, B, yep and you would be benching one time that week. So it's one or two times, yeah. right? And then we did something else too. Well, the other thing I did was I added in some bodybuilding movements, okay. um, some accessory exercises. Like you see here. Which I found to be extremely helpful with the fact that when I stalled on my bench press, which happens Yeah, often, a lot of people will have that happen, yeah. Um, I found that it was still a good avenue to really go through different movements that would allow for more chest growth. Yeah, it, well, first of all, it, it, other, other than the bench press, it, it allows for a complete chest contraction in a lot of these cases. Adduction. Through all these exercises, adduction. And also, it gives you the opportunity to use more hypertrophy techniques. Because yeah. let's face it, progressive overload, while important, is only one hypertrophy technique and when building a bigger chest is the goal, you need to explore all of them. So eccentric focus exercises here, the ability to perform some of these for higher reps, for metabolic overload, but not discounting the, the effectiveness of those other techniques and the ability to incorporate them with the power building approach yep. was really key. So the next thing you wanna do if you wanna build up that skinny chest is you're gonna wanna bump up the angle of that bench, do more upper chest work. Did you know that your body actually sort of has a growth limiter effect built in to the upper chest fibers? In other words, if you don't train them enough, the sternal head is not necessarily going to continue to grow because it has an effect on the biomechanics of the shoulder. Having both heads equally developed is going to be very important. So what do we do? We bump up the ratio of upper chest work to lower chest work because we tend to not get enough focus on it as is. Jesse, you did a lot more of that. I did, I did. For every one flat chest exercise or lower chest exercise, I was doing two upper chest exercises. So what were some of your favorites? Uh, some of my favorites were the uh, low to high crossover, which I thought was an awesome exercise. And I was able to move a little bit of weight with it, which was pretty good, um, and to get a really good contraction. Uh, next was the inclined dumbbell bench press, which right. I love as an exercise because, again, that allows me to move a little bit more weight than I would with, uh, with the cable exercise. Again, going back to what we said in the beginning, if you did two workouts for your chest in a week, yep. you'd be benching with the incline twice in both workouts, yep. but with the flat bench you did once. Yes. Okay. So then um, another exercise that I really loved to do was the upper chest pullover. Mm -hmm. And developed that kind of V chisel at the top, you know, like, yeah. right like up A little here. inverted heart shape, right. <laughs> right. And uh, another one that I loved to do was the decline push-up as one of my metabolic exercises as we've talked about before. Right, so in the last part we talked about exploring all the different avenues for growth. Well, yeah. the metabolic options here as a push-up is great because you could do the higher rep totals but of course, if you switch the angle to the decline, you're actually ironically working more of the upper chest. Yeah. So you gotta focus on that upper chest. Don't just look at it as an afterthought, make it a key part of your approach to building a bigger chest. All right, so we talked about adding more meat. We talked about adding more to the upper chest. What about if you just wanna kind of broaden that chest out, get that bigger, wider chest? You do have to realize that there are techniques that we can incorporate that help this along. And for me, that's full range of motion. Full range of motion for sure. Um, I found that especially on exercises like the dumbbell bench press, getting the dumbbells all the way down, you know, touching the outside of my chest and uh, making sure I'm getting to that good stretch position, especially on a crossover too, 
um, you know, when I got my arm all the way back, could I go back another half an inch, maybe an inch more? And when I did, and I realized, yeah, I could get a little bit further back, I did get a greater stretch on it. Again, any muscle that you want to develop through a full range of motion is going to be more developed. Mm -hmm. You have to take it through and apply that tension through the entire range of motion that it allows you for. It's not unlike any other muscle group, guys. The chest is also responsive to stretch tension, like the traps are, or even the calves are responsive to stretch tension. But here you just have to be a lot more mindful of getting yourself there. Yeah, and it kind of demanded a little bit more of a focus that I wasn't kind of putting there before. Right, so a focused effort through all the exercises that you're doing, but that full range of motion is definitely critical. And that brings us to technique number four, and actually pairing up hand in hand with what we just talked about was, if you want to make sure you get into full range of motion, then give yourself a chance to assess whether you're through full range of motion, and the best way to do that is how? With a pause. Right, if you can just pause at the bottom of the rep, you get a chance to say, am I in the position I need to be? And if I'm not, it gives you that chance to adjust. Exactly, like on the dumbbell bench press, when I get the dumbbells down to the bottom of the rep, it would give me a chance to assess just for a second, am I deep enough and have I got enough stretch there, and then I'd be able to press from there. Or right. like on a dip, when I can get to the bottom and really assess where I'm at. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, like with a dip too, you don't want to go too low. I've talked about so many times going too low on a dip places too much stress on your right. shoulder. So it even gives you a sense to be able to keep yourself in a safe position at the bottom of that exercise. Exactly. One more you did too. Uh, this one is actually probably one of my favorites, and this is the high to low crossover. Right. Um, I found myself, when I got to the top of the rep, um, I found that I was really getting a good stretch, and when I paused there, I was able to really you know, lean forward just a little right, bit right, right, right. to get an extra, extra bit of stretch on yeah. it. Traction, and this is something that you actually do almost in every one of your chest workouts. I, admittedly so, it's <laughs> one of my favorite chest workouts. He just likes the way he looks in it, guys. So, <laughs> so you obviously get the additional benefits of the pause reps too. You get more time under tension. You get more focused strength from the muscle you're trying to build. You take away momentum when you use pause reps. Yeah. So for all those benefits, you're gonna wanna make sure you incorporate them as well. And I found that they were- Were you about to say something? Oh, I was about to tell a hilarious joke. What was it? Well, it's not really appropriate for camera. So, proceed. When you're a skinny guy and you can't build your chest, it can be very frustrating, right Jesse? Very frustrating. Doing the right things though can help you to unlock more growth. If you're looking for how to actually solve that lower chest problem where you kind of don't even have any line down here at all, we have the lower chest solution you definitely want to check out. If you're looking for a program like the old school iron one that Jesse did, you can find it over at athletics.com. Make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. What was that joke again? Oh, uh, so two gym bros walk into a bar and they try to lift it. See you soon, guys.